modern humans have it so easy. Among those who eat meat, few will ever have to hunt their own lunch, let alone risk serious pain or even death for it. Many species of animals lack this luxury. Fetching food for them means a hard work that might risk their own lives. This has resulted in some incredible methods used to get themselves a meal. From the one that removes venom from its food to the one that lures its predator to feed on, here are 10 of the smartest ways animals get their food. Without teeth, humpback whales use baleen plates like edges hanging down from the upper jaw to strain large quantities of herrings, krill, and other small prey for food. In addition, humpbacks are the only baleen whales that feed cooperatively in a pod, using bubble nets to trap their prey. Bubble net behaviors may vary by region and individual whales, but they generally appear to be a way for the pod to capture more prey than each whale could on its own. Sometimes, one pod will even steal from another's bubble net. Using Southeast Alaskan humpback whales as an example, the hunt begins when a pod dives beneath a school of herring. The humpbacks then broadcast feeding calls to herd the frightened herring upward in a clump. As the herring rush to the surface, the humpbacks release columns of air bubbles from their blowholes to encircle the fish in a bubble net. A school of frightened herring won't swim through bubbles, so this prevents their horizontal escape. However, if individual fish get separated from the school, they might be able to cross the bubble barrier and escape unharmed. Once the herring are corralled, the humpback whales swim upward through the net with mouths open and the fish are toast. The nocturnal Japanese sea catfish lives around the southern tip of Japan and the Ryukyu Islands. Researchers have discovered that sensory nerve fibers on the catfish's whiskers responded to minor changes in the acidity of seawater. Japanese sea catfish use these sensors to locate their prey like small sea worms called polychaetes, the worms that live in small tunnels of mud on the ocean floor. When these worms breathe, they exhale small quantities of carbon dioxide, which react with the seawater to form carbonic acid. This causes a slight decline of about 0.1 in the pH level of the water around the mouth of the worm's home. When the catfish detects this change, it dives down and sucks the worms out of their homes. These fish are like swimming pH meters. The catfish's fibers are most sensitive at natural seawater's pH of 8.2. But once the level dips to eight or below, the fish dramatically loses its food-finding capability. Scientists are concerned that global warming's acidifying of our oceans may compromise this animal's ability to hunt and capture its prey. With their painful sting and tendency to swarm, it can seem like bees should have no natural predators. Even without the painful possibility of being stung, they hardly look appetizing, at least not to humans. Bees actually have numerous natural predators, but they are so central to the diet of one bird species that the birds are even known as bee eaters. Bee eaters are usually colorful and possess long black beaks with which they skillfully pluck bees out of the air mid-flight. Naturally, they do not want to be stung by the bee. To avoid this, they cleverly hit the captured bee's head against a rock or tree branch to stun it. Then they flip it over and rub its tail up and down until the stinger and venom sac are removed. Now safe to eat, the bee is swallowed whole. It might sound brutal, but bee eaters play an important role in keeping the insect populations in balance. Golden eagles have a wide variety of diet, including squirrels, reptiles, and other birds. These dark brown northern hemisphere eagles have powerful feet and sharp talons, which enables them to swoop in from above and grab indefensive prey. However, Golden eagles are also capable of taking down mountain goats on the edge of cliffs. This is done by picking them up and dropping them deliberately from a distance into the rocks below to kill them. The golden eagles will then feed on the carcass of the dead goat. Given the weight of goats, sometimes more than 100 kilograms, catching them and picking them up mid-flight is no easy feat. Eagles are opportunistic feeders, but this is taking it to the next level. Most predatory fish hunt prey that travel in large groups because it takes less energy to catch them. When the amount of prey declines too much, the predator fish simply relocates to other regions with more dining options. 
Lionfish, on the other hand, operate more like the Terminator, preferring to stay in one region until their prey is locally extinct. Native to the Pacific Ocean, lionfish are beautifully colored with large spiny fins. The bold colors don't hinder them, as their sharp, poisonous spines protect them from other marine life. Lionfish have been able to hunt almost unchecked in the Atlantic Ocean and parts of the Caribbean since the late 1980s, when fish hobbyists and local aquariums were believed to first place them into waters off the coast of Florida. The native fish there don't realize the lionfish are dangerous to them. By fanning their fins, lionfish drive smaller prey into a corner and swallow them in a quick surprise attack. Lionfish have eliminated over 90% of the native fish in some Atlantic regions. In an effort to control this environmental menace, scientists have removed vast numbers of them from certain reefs to create safe havens where native fish can repopulate. Where lionfish numbers have been reduced by 75 to 95%, native fish have recovered by 50 to 70%. Normally, frogs eat bugs, but ground beetles of the genus Epimis have no interest in that, luring their potential predators into becoming a victory dinner and succeeding at almost every attempt. In this predator-prey role reversal, the beetle patiently moves its mouth parts and antennae to get the attention of toads, frogs, and other amphibians. They're intensely goading these creatures, and if a frog attacks to eat it, the beetle would avoid its tongue and attach its double-hooked mouth parts to the frog instead. Safe from the frog's deadly mouth, the beetle then begins to suck out fluids while chewing the frog's body. Almost always, the epimis kills the much larger amphibian and enjoys a delicious meal as a reward. Herons are carnivorous, generally feeding on any meat they can hunt or forage. But the black heron stands out from the rest with its clever feeding technique. When hunting, a black heron would tuck its head down and spread the wings around its body to create a sunshade. Small fish that are looking for places to hide will be attracted to this shade, allowing the bird to snap them easily. It is also believed that this shade created by the wings allows the bird avoid sun reflection and see clearly past the surface. Simultaneously, this position creates a temporary camouflage for the bird, as all the fish see from below is a single dark mass. Many snakes use their tails as a decoy that trick prey into coming closer to them, but the spider-tailed viper stood in a league of its own. With the tail resembling a spider, the viper would move it in a figure of eight pattern, mimicking the movement of a real spider wandering around. With its body well camouflaged and hidden, all a bird sees is a delicious, easy meal. But when a bird swoops in to peck at the spider, the snake is ready to strike within a fraction of a second, injecting venom to paralyze it. The bird, who thought it was getting a meal, ends up becoming a meal instead. However, only migratory birds seem to be fooled by the viper's elaborate lure, suggesting local birds may have become wise to the trick. As a fish that feeds on insects, Archerfish has developed one of the most impressive technique in the animal kingdom to satisfy its appetite. In fact, archerfish are known as spitting sharpshooters for this very purpose. Able to shoot down insects up to 10 feet above the water. This is made possible because archerfish have specially adapted mouth and eyesight. When an archerfish shoots a jet of water, it raises its tongue against the roof of the mouth, forming a tube. The gill covers are then quickly closed, which forces the water along the tube. Impressively, they can do this so accurately, despite of the refraction of light and gravity. As a matter of fact, an adult fish almost always hits the target on the first shot. Despite of the name, a glowworm is not a real worm, but a larva of a fungus gnat species endemic to New Zealand. Residing in dark and damp places like caves, a glowworm would spin a nest out of silk on the ceiling of the cave and hangs down up to 30 silk threads, along which it regularly places small sticky droplets. From here, these larvae would use chemicals in their abdomen to produce light. And when a colony of these larvae do this, they would transform the dark cave into a natural planetarium. Unsuspecting small invertebrates who think that they are under the sky might get disoriented by these fake stars, causing them to fly straight into the lights eventually getting caught in the sticky threads set by these larvae. 
This is when the larva reels in its catch by ingesting the thread and starts feeding on the prey alive. <laughs>